So far I was going to talk about haiku, another retro desktop. Well, kind of, yeah. <laughs> well, it's yeah, it's inspired by uh, retro stuff actually because it's, it's now vintage. So yeah, <clears throat> so welcome. Um, yes, <clears throat> I'm a user and a developer for Haiku, uh, and I think there are still some interesting bits to to copy from us. So uh, we are sharing. So what's uh, what's Haiku? <coughs> Haiku is a free software operating system. So it's inspired by the BOS, that most of you don't know what it's about. Um, <coughs> it was a proprietary operating system um, up to the like uh, 2001 until the company shut down. People tried to maintain it, um, but it didn't work out. Um, and despite the fact that it was proprietary, some of us used it, and we thought it had interesting ideas, so uh, we just thought, oh, let's rewrite it as free software, so it, it won't be able to disappear anymore. Uh, so basically, Haiku is to BOS what GNU Linux is to Unix, <coughs> and what ReactOS is to Windows, if you don't know about ReactOS. Um, we use our own kernel and our own graphics server, so um, it's interesting because we control the whole stack. So th if there's something we need from the kernel, we don't have to call li Linus and ask, please add this syscall. Um, we just patch it and that's it. Um, on the other hand, it means, well, porting stuff from GNU Linux that uses X11, it's a bit harder. <coughs> Especially because, <coughs> well, some Linux devs, they, when they get patches for Haiku, they complain, oh, but that's not, that's not POSIX, whatever. Uh, even though we do have, uh, we do add proper configure uh, detection of the feature and whatever. Uh, but then they just don't forget that they also use private, well, Linux on these syscalls that aren't POSIX either, but well. They are Linux, they don't care. Um, <coughs> and also we have a, a C++ API uh, that has some inter interesting consequences, uh, like the fact that we have to still use GCC2 to compile the base system, but we also support GCC5, uh, it's 6 now, I think, I don't know. Um, so yeah, um, so that's what uh, we were inspired by, that's um, an old screenshot of uh, the US, and oh look, there's a dock. Um, but it, it got changed to uh, the desk bar later on. <coughs> but yeah, docks are not really new. <coughs> Sorry. So that's just to give you an idea of the Haiku um, in heritage. Um, so BOS borrowed stuff from Unix, from macOS, because it was created by an ex uh, Apple. Um, CEO, uh, Apple Europe CEO, so, yeah. And so, I said we, um, I said we use our own kernel, we actually fork the new OS kernel, which was written by an ex B Inc engineer who was frustra frustrated because it couldn't work on the BOS kernel, so he just said, oh, let's write my own kernel, and we forked it, and now it's our own version. Uh, so, you might think, okay, this looks like 1990s uh, stuff to me. Um, uh, most of us don't really fancy stuff like, wow, animations and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, anim animations are cool, but when uh, you're in macOS and you're trying to switch from one space to another, you, c you have to wait for the thing to move. And you, you, if you hit the shortcut uh, too many times, it just goes, oh, 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 I'm sick. Um, so yeah, we prefer just to have the thing work, and it's faster this way. Uh, and there's more, more to it. Um, of, of course, we've added some uh, new stuff in Haiku that weren't really uh, current standards uh, at the BOS time, like uh, layout support, which was necessary then for uh, the translation, uh, because some strings are 
not the same uh, width in different languages. Um, and it works quite well now. Some applications still need to be ported to uh, this API, but uh, most actually work this way. The, um, <coughs> the design of our uh, graphics server and um, uh, interface kit, which is our own uh, toolkit, um, is a bit uh, weird because um, we use threads everywhere, uh, maybe a bit too much for some people. Um, App Server, which um, actually is the graphics server, uh, spawns a thread per window to handle the repainting and stuff like that. And the application itself uh, also has several so-called uh, B-loopers objects, which actually spawn their own thread. So the main thread uh, is taken over by the B application object, which runs the messaging loop for the, the, the whole application. So like so messages like, uh, hey, let's quit or whatever, or you've got uh, a new file to open or something. And uh, also, uh, every time you create a, a new window, uh, well, we create a new thread to handle the, the Windows uh, messaging uh, itself, like uh, you need to repaint, it has been resized, whatever. Um, this means um, that when a window is stuck calculating, well, if a window is stuck calculating something, uh, the whole application won't freeze just because of it. Uh, usually we separate a uh, large calculation in yet another thread, but like video decoding. Uh, VLC does that. It has a lot of thread even on other platforms. But uh, if you look at most applications on GNU Linux, uh, it's basically uh, the main, uh, main thread which is a loop on select, uh, which works, but, well, it just serializes stuff. So it's good for responsiveness, but on the other hand, when we have to port Linux-ish uh, applications, we have to ser serialize back all the messages into a pipe and add it to the select loop, and, well, it works, but it's not as good as it sh should be, but, well, it, it just works. <coughs> we have um, what we call replicants, um, uh, you've seen uh, Plasma with, uh, um, earlier with uh, widgets. It's a bit like this, uh, except that's um, one application that can provide a, a, a B view, so it's the base canvas uh, of the toolkit, uh, to another application. Um, and it's not limiting to, limited to the, the desktop. It can be uh, used by another application. So, for example, uh, there's <coughs> a documentation browser which is called Be Happy, which actually used to load the net positive replicant, and I fixed it to use the uh, NetSurf re replicant um, to display the HTML documentation. <coughs> um, there's one thing that I really miss on other uh, systems, it's called the X-ray navigation. So um, uh, basically, uh, it means you don't have to open yet another window uh, just to go down a folder. <coughs> so, well, I can show you live. Uh, so that's just my um, main development virtual machine um, in VirtualBox. So it's, it's a bit slow to boot, uh, but it's li still uh, faster than most other operating systems uh, I know. <coughs> so yeah, uh, folders, uh, lots of folders. So um, you go to the desktop and then you can just browse them. Oh, that's from a talk of me. Uh, oh, that was last year. Uh, so yeah, we can browse the file system this way, and you can even just take one folder and uh, move it. Well, yeah, whatever. There, there, and yeah. So um, so yeah, you can just move things around without having to open Windows uh, every time. And there's also move to copy to with the, the same same thing. <coughs> we have a scripting API, which, well, on, on Linux you have uh, Dbus. Um, it's a bit alike, uh, and so we can actually the, the the base toolkit actually understand it. So you can actually say, hey, um, give me the title of the window or uh, simulate a click on this button, whatever. Uh, so it could be interesting like for a uh, screen reader to just get the, <coughs> the details of the interface. Um, 
node monitoring, the, the tracker uses it to uh, track as the file browser. Uh, it uses it to see wh which files have been moved and whatever. Uh, so, well, I notify is not really a new invention. Um, we also have uh, a lot um, of use of extended attributes. We just call them attributes, but um, except ours are tight, so you can actually say it's a string, it's an integer, a float, or whatever, or, <coughs> or just binary. Um, and like on Linux and most OSs, it's just uh, a name and a value, which is either a string or a binary or whatever. Um, and the fact that it's type means the the file system also can index it. So, uh, because if you want to index a float or a s uh, integer, a string, it's a bit different to handle. Um, so, uh, BFS, which is the file system we use, actually can index those and m make them searchable uh, way faster than having to uh, call files, extract stuff, and make a database, a separate database uh, in the file system. Uh, and it's also always consistent. So, it's used for emails, contacts, whatever. Um, so, uh, and it's really used everywhere. Um, <clears throat> as I said, uh, most operating systems uh, know about extended attributes, uh, but uh, they usually have their own twist about it. Um, there's an effort to standardize, um, at least on Linux, <coughs> that's called the Common Extended Attributes uh, Standard from the Free Desktop uh, website. Um, it's been used like, uh, well, <coughs> in some places, but I didn't really see uh, much uh, of usage uh, of them. Um, and well, when you move files around on NTFS, uh, whatever, then they get uh, mangled, and this results in just a, a blob, you don't know what's inside. So I tried to propose a solution, uh, but well, it seems nobody cares, so <coughs> we just do it um, our way. We also have uh, live queries. So um, <coughs> basically, uh, the kernel knows about um, um, attribute indices and also <coughs> queries. So you can uh, say, uh, to talk to the kernel and uh, ask, uh, hey, what are the files that uh, have uh, this in the name, that are, have been modified since, that have the mail uh, colon status, status equals new? Uh, so you can actually get the list of the new mails in the file browser. So you don't have to open the mail client just to see if you've got new mail. So and it's updated uh, live, uh, of course. So when you the new mails are fetched, they get in the in the list. So you can search by attribute, and it ends up it ends up as a formula. Uh, some of you might have uh, seen uh, Spotlight, the search stuff in uh, app Mac OS. Uh, at some point, you could uh, enter the formula. Well, the, the same guy who wrote BFS actually wrote uh, this stuff in Spotlight uh, uh, for Apple, so it's, not, uh, it's quite similar. Uh, we also have a MIME database, uh, like you do have on, on Linux, um, but it's more integrated and it's also used for, <coughs> for applications, like each application has uh, its own signature. Uh, so you can actually do interesting things, like say open with the MIME signature. So it, either it's uh, the application itself or one of the MIME types it supports. Uh, so it just works uh, the same way. And we also use it for clipboards. Um, I think on uh, Linux now it's uh, also used uh, by uh, um, the X uh, uh, paste, pasteboard or whatever, clipboard, whatever. Um, not all applications really handle it correctly. Uh, I've, I've sent patches like to VirtualBox to support uh, images, and but it's not really uh, there yet. At least the, the X11 clipboard now supports UTF-8. Wow, that's great. <coughs> and uh, drag and drop as well. Um, like, oh well. Uh, well, it's, well, it's not really easy here, so. Uh, well, uh, if you... Uh, open an image and you select a rectangle from it and you just uh, right drag it on the desktop and you can get a list of the file formats uh, that uh, the, the application can save to and then you can decide which format you want and just ask the application back for, oh, I need this mind type, please convert. 
Uh, oh, and yes, we um, we also have used it for uh, URI um, scheme handlers. Uh, but well, it also exists um, on uh, Linux. Uh, it's just not the same prefix, but it it also works. <coughs> we have our own um, icon format. Back in the days, BOS used to have bitmap icons because, well, it was just uh, the way things were at the, at the time. Uh, it was stored as in extended attributes uh, in the small section of the inode because there was still some space in the file system, so it was just um, faster this way. Um, and uh, Zeta was an attempt to revive BOS uh, a bit later. Uh, we tried to, because I, I worked there uh, at the time, we tried to put SVG in there, but, well, SVG is like, it's text, and it's like, oh, 128 kilobytes just for an icon, it's a bit large, even compressed. Um, and so for Haiku, um, uh, Stefan, we, which uh, is one of the developers, uh, designed uh, our own icon format that's uh, simplified the coordinates, for example, are uh, on 8 bits, uh, 8 bits uh, for X, 8 bits for uh, Y. Uh, so it's much smaller and it's still vector, uh, a vector format. It has gradients and transparency and, uh, and the icon editor uh, can import and export SVG. So we should be able to import uh, the uh, uh, SVG icons from uh, uh, GNU Linux uh, themes, for example. And we now have have our own uh, packaging system. It's brand new. Well, it has like one or two years um, since we actually switched to it. Um, so by the way, if, if you want to try Haiku, you can have um, images on the website for VirtualBox uh, and VMware and what, whatnot. And uh, the uh, ISO, you can either, either drive, um, burn a, a CD and or dump it to a USB key and boot from it. Uh, just Make sure you take a nightly build, not the official alpha, because it's like three years old and it doesn't have the packaging uh, stuff, so it's a bit of a shame. We should get a beta version someday. Real soon now, we say. <coughs> so um, we went a bit like the Snap stuff from Ubuntu. I won't say who copied who. Uh, uh, but it's a package FS. Basically, it's a file system that mounts the content of the package um, inside the file system. So it's, <coughs> it's read-only. So it's nice because uh, you, make, you are sure the files weren't modified by any uh, other third party. Uh, but then some things like Python and Ruby or, or whatever, they they always want to modify the file to add something, uh, add a line when a package has been installed. Or, ah, well, well. Uh, but we handle that. And it's nice because uh, there are transactions. So when you update, um, I can show you a, an update uh, there. It should work. So that's, uh, we do have a graphics uh, application store, but the update isn't handled by the, the, the GUI for now. Uh, so yeah, it just wants to update the, it. So, and notice the nice uh, Unicode uh, progress bar. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'll just leave it running. Uh, oh, by the way, yeah, the, um, the blue lines here are just um, the um, um, resize uh, size, so you can actually uh, ha use some modifier, uh, modifiers and move the mouse to resize the window in, on, on one side without having to to, uh, to hit the spot here. Uh, so yeah, it's updated. Um, <coughs> uh, so it has some similar similarities with GNU Geeks, um, if you've heard of, uh, about it. Uh, it's not really the same, but it has some similar concepts. Uh, and also it's way faster. It was already really fast, but it's even now way faster to install Haiku be because it only means like copying 200 files and that's it. Uh, workspaces, well, everyone has a virtual um, desktops. <coughs> we have our own twist. So um, each window can be mapped to uh, any and all of the workspaces. There's basically a bitmap, a 32-bit uh, field, which one, uh, one bits per workspace. And they can have their own resolution. It's 
much less useful now, but in the BOS days, when you wanted to see if a web website was working in 266 colors, you would just take the browser window and switch to another workspace and see, oh, this color is, uh, oh. let's change it. Um, and we also have uh, a nice uh, stack and tie feature, <coughs> which allows you to uh, um, superimpose windows and so have them uh, stick together uh, with the tabs arranged automatically. You can actually uh, slide the tabs if you want. Just hold shift and click the tab. Um, and you can actually uh, also glue them uh, side by side and move them as a group. <coughs> so when you're working on a project, you want some applications to just stay together. <coughs> uh, yeah, that's about it. Um, I could show you probably. <coughs> so yeah, that's the, um, the updates. Uh, when you're updating the system packages, you actually have to reboot uh, for now uh, to actually handle <coughs> to actually uh, install more packages because it just has the transaction. It's waiting for the the other uh, the old version of the package to be uh, uh, left unused. So um, I just reboot, um, <coughs> and then I show you the um, uh, interface for the package manager. Um, yeah, that's yeah. My desktop is a. A bit messy, <coughs> but it's bigger on the inside. Uh, I could, yeah, uh, hmm. it would be easier than going to um, the desk bar. Uh, uh, that's a bit wide. So yeah, that's how it looks, just like any other package manager. So you just. Just like any other package manager, you can even rate applications and whatever. And um, <coughs> so the file system is a bit uh, different than on Unix, but we have a root folder and whatever. I can show you this. Um, sorry. So, yeah, so that's the file systems currently mounted. Um, so slash boot is actually the root file system uh, because slash is a virtual uh, file system as well and those are the package FS instances so inside slash system it's uh, read only but you can actually install to slash boot slash system slash non dash packa uh, package uh, to have the read write version if you really need to for some reason uh, and yeah So that's where the packages are stored. Um, there's this folder which holds the previous transactions. So if you reboot, well, if you can't boot the, after an update, you can actually go into the bootloader and say, oh, let's boot this version or this version. Um, so it's really, really handy to uh, resolve a, a broken update. Um, so, uh, and just uh, last, last thing, well, I've got CD record here installed, and if I just click and move the package away, yeah, it wants to uh, uninstall the, uh, the another package that depends on it, and then CD R, I can just I can just uh, use it if I just take the package back in. And it's, and it's back. And it also shuts down really fast. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for um, the question, uh, for the um, presentation, for attending. And we have some time for a question, I think. Support. Uh, I mean hardware support. Uh, I mean uh, graphic, uh, uh, graphic like Nvidia or 
So what about hardware support? <coughs> um, well, it's not really um, a desktop um, um, question, but um, <coughs> we do have a um, glue library to uh, reuse uh, FreeBSD uh, network drivers. Mm -hmm. So that's really useful. <coughs> um, we have an HD audio driver that works on most recent hardware. I also bought it open sound uh, when it was open source, like five years ago or something. Um, uh, the current issue is mostly about graphics card. Um, we support uh, Visa mode, so at least you should be able to get to desktop. Uh, the problem with this machine is because it, it costs like uh, 1,400 euros. I have a full HD panel, but when I would haiku, I'm in, in Visa mode in uh, 1,024 by 700 and ah, come on, Nvidia. Um, so uh, yeah. Uh, I think they did uh, publish specs now. I really should have a look at them. Um, <coughs> and I think the the bug, <coughs> sorry, I think the bug in Nuvo that uh, crashed like three times a week on this machine has been fixed. So I should probably be able to port Nuvo to Haiku when I've got the time. Uh, yeah, uh, we do have uh, some uh, OpenGL support uh, with Misa, so uh, uh, software rendering as uh, I think it's called uh, SW Pipe. So it's a bit faster than the, the default software rendering, uh, but we don't really have uh, 3D acceleration for now. Um, patch is welcome, I would say. Uh, so yeah, that's mostly, um, most of the problems are with graphics cards. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, you mentioned <coughs> that you have to use GCC2, but you can use GCC6, so how does that work? You have both versions of the ABI, like on <coughs> So uh, yeah, question was um, um, use GCC two, but you also GCC uh, five or six, uh, and how is it uh, handled? Uh, yes, we basically do the same way as on Linux. You have slash lib slash uh, and slash lib slash uh, sixty four uh, whatever. So you we ha also have slash system slash lib and slash system slash lib slash uh, x eighty six, which is the uh, architecture, a uh, separate architecture uh, name, nickname for GCC uh, 6. Uh, the, the, the old one is named x86 underscore GCC 2 to make sure we know the difference. And the, our um, Haiku port uh, tool uh, can also build uh, both uh, when the recipe supports both. So uh, usually the recipe declares uh, architecture equals x x86 GCC 2. Secondary architecture equals x86. Uh, so, and for things like the native web browser, we use WebKit, and WebKit doesn't really care about GCC2. Uh, so yeah, we have to support it anyway. And the goal was uh, to have binary compatibility with BOS for R1, and to drop that afterwards. So we are working on also on newer <coughs> stuff. We just st still want to have uh, the binary compatibility because it's. Uh, it sets uh, a precise goal for R1, mostly. Uh, yeah. No. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, <coughs> apart from you said before that we support uh, C++, what about other languages in development platforms, <coughs> for example, Java? So, uh, yeah, we support C++. What about other languages? Uh, we are officially supported by OpenJDK, which is quite rare to to say. Um, and so our Java port is mostly working. Um, I didn't really use it much, but uh, things like the Arduino uh, ID uh, has been packaged. Uh, I think the last time I tried to install it, uh, one of the dependency was broken um, by children. Uh, there's Sorry? Minecraft? Uh, I didn't try uh, running Minecraft. <coughs> that would be interesting. <laughs> uh, or, uh, yeah. Uh, there are uh, alternative, uh, free software alternative to Minecraft, by the way. Um, uh, yeah, there's uh, Python. Uh, uh, we do have a Qt port, by the way. Uh, there's Qt4 and Qt5. 
which is quite handy because uh, some software are huge and we don't want to rewrite them from scratch. Uh, so we sh you should be able to use Qt with Python maybe. I didn't try. Uh, Python, uh, I think there's Perl, Ruby. <coughs> uh, someone started the Go port like long ago, but it's an ancient version and uh, I think I think somebody uh, updated the port, but I'm, I'm not sure which date it's, it's uh, at. Sorry, I have some. Time is over. Okay, thanks. <laughs>